The ability to predict projectiles is very important for some types of games. Here we will explore on how to make perfect bounces predictions and use that to make a simple brick breaker style game. We'll go over on how to simulate 2D physics, draw the prediction lines, and the nuances of making a small game. The first step is drawing our lines. So let's start by creating our player script. There are several ways to draw lines in 2D. All 2D nodes in Godot have a draw function that can be used to draw a variety of shapes using code, and we are going to use just that. The draw line function is used to draw a single line. It takes in a local start position, the offset end position, a color, and the size. So here, by passing the vector 2.0, we are making the line starting at the same position as our object, a zero offset from the node's position, and then making the line end 50 pixels to the right and 100 pixels up. You might have noticed, but using these local offsets is very confusing and inconvenient, and won't work well for what we are going to need. So we made our own draw line global instead, that receives a global point A and point B, and just draws a line between them. We can convert the first point local offset by setting it to point A minus the node's global position, and the end offset in the same way by using the point B instead. Then, we just need to call the draw line with these new parameters. So in here now, we draw the line from the top right of the screen until the screen point 200, 200. With that out of the way, now let's take a look on how we are going to predict our shots. We are going to be aiming at the position of our mouse, then we are going to simulate the physics in small steps and draw a line between each of these points. At our draw function, we are going to be updating the trajectory lines. But the thing about the draw function is that it is very optimized, so it is not called every frame, only in specific conditions, such as visibility changes. So we need to call QEDraw at our process function to forcibly redraw these lines. The getForwardDirection function returns the direction that our shots are fired. So we return the direction towards our mouse by using the global position direction 2 and passing the get global mouse position. Finally, let's see how we can simulate our shots. We get our start velocity by multiplying the explosion force by our forward direction. We create our line start and line end, and get our gravity and drag values from the project setting by calling project settings .get setting. The drag value here is the linear velocity our rigid bodies lose over time naturally. Then we declare our time step. This here is important. The bigger the time step, the more imprecise the calculations will be. Godot Physics typically tries to run the time step as 0.16, but you can get away with higher values depending on the precision you want. Here's an example of how the time step affects the precision. And here's the color vectors I used just to show the lines better. Then we simulate a number of points. We add the gravity multiplied by the time step to our y velocity, set the line end to the line start, and add our velocity times the time step to it. Then we apply our drag to the velocity. We can get our drag by using 1 minus drag times the time step. And here we are using clamp f to make sure it's within the 0, 1 values. Then we cast a ray to check the ground and stop predicting after hitting something. Finally, we draw our line using the draw line global we made and set the line start for our next iteration. Don't worry too much about the ray cast here, we are going to replace that in a bit for a better alternative. If we play our game now, we can see the very nice ballistic trajectory towards our mouse position. So let's shoot something to check if it's really working. Here I have our projectile scene. It uses a normal rigid body with a sprite, nothing too special. The only important thing here is to make sure it is on a different physics layer than the ground. This is to make sure the projection lines won't predict collisions with the projectile itself. Back to our code. We store a preload of our projectile scene and use the unhealthy input function to spawn and shot our bow when the attack button is pressed. In our dual attack function, we instantiate the projectile scene, add it to the game, set its position, and set its start velocity with linear velocity equals explosion force times get forward direction. With that, we can see that our shots are indeed following our prediction. Now let's try adding bounces. To enable bounces, we need to add a new physics material to our rigid body projectile. Let's disable attrition and enable full bounce. Now back to our code, we only need a small change. When we hit something, we can pass the collision normal to the velocity.bounce method, and we can get the resulting bounce velocity that way. Then we draw a yellow line, set the line start to the collision hit point, and continue to the next direction. Simple enough, but there are a lot of problems with that. Calculating the bounces like this is very imprecise. Using raycasts, we get the collision point at the center of our object instead of the collision borders. And this is compounded with each new bounce. 
we can also bypass some of the would-be collisions and some other problems as well. So instead of using recast, we are going to be doing things another way. We are going to be adding a hidden projectile inside our player node that we are going to use to test collisions with. First, let's add our projectile to the scene. Make it local to remove the reference to the scene. Then let's change the type of the rigid body to a character body 2D node. We are going to be using this test projectile to simulate our physics collisions instead of using recasts. And because we changed the type from our original projectile, we already have the correct collision size, sprite and even the collision layer set up. Now in our player script, let's add a reference to our new test projectile. And inside update trajectory, we only need to put our new test projectile at the start position. And instead of using raycast, we are going to use our test projectile move and collide method. This moves our test projectile and returns the collision information if there is one. And that is the main reason we are using the character body 2D so that we can call move and collide multiple times instead of a single frame and check for collisions. If we test our game now, we get a very accurate, nearly perfect results. But there are still some problems. Sometimes, rigid body physics behaves in some strange ways. Or the bounces are still not correct near the borders. For some reason, the character body 2D and rigid body 2D collision normals are not always the same. Maybe the attrition that only the rigid body 2D has is somehow affecting things, or maybe it's simply a physics bug. But anyways, we can fix this. And to do that, we are going to completely ditch the rigid body for our shots. And instead, let's change our projectile type to a character body 2D node, making sure the collision layers are still there. And now we are going to make a script to make it move and bounce. Nothing too fancy. We apply the gravity and drag, just like inside our trajectory prediction function. Use the move and collide to move our object, and then update the velocity to bounce based on the collision normal. We also need to update our player script do attack method to use velocity instead of linear velocity now. But that's it. Now the game has perfect prediction lines, including corner bounces. And if you are still getting accurate results, make sure the time step in the prediction side is small enough. Now. Let's turn this into a game. First, we are going to give our shots some trail lines to show their movement. Add a new Line 2D node. This node let us draw lines by clicking on the screen. We are going to use that for our trails. Let's change its color to blue, change the thickness, and create a new width curve. Here we can set the width along the time. Starting at 1 and ending at 0, we make the line grow thinner with time. For our case though, we want the line to start at 0 and end at 1. That way, the new points we are going to add at the end will be thicker. With that done, let's reset our points and change our script to add the points for us. We get a reference for our line 2D, and here we declare the time left, time step, and max points variable. Each frame, we are going to decrease the time left, and when it hits 0, we reset its time to the time step and add new points to the line 2D. This essentially creates us a timer that will add points to the line 2D each time the time step passes. Adding the points is simple. Calling the addPoint method, we will add that point to the end of the line 2D. We then check for how many points there are and delete the first point if there are too many. This results in a very satisfying trailing lines for our shots. I changed the trail line thickness to 3 to show it better here. Now let's create our brick object. The bricks are going to take damage when hit and be destroyed by our ball. Select Create New Scene. For the root type, select the fourth option and then select Static Body 2D. Name it Brick and hit OK. Add a new Animated Sprite 2D node. Inside the Animation tab, create a new sprite frames. Click it and a new tab will expand at the bottom. Here, click on the square grid button to add new frames. We are going to select our brick sprite sheet. You can change the sprite sheet tile size in the right panel. The sprite sheet in this case is 18 by 18 pixels. You can zoom in by holding Ctrl and using the mouse wheel, and select tiles by clicking on them. Select our brick sprites, set the animation frame to zero, and disable the loop. We are going to control our sprites in code. We just use the animated sprite 2D because it's easier to set up and control sprites this way. Don't forget to also add the collision for the brick. You can scale around the center by holding Alt. 
Now create a script for our brick. We use the max frames to store the number of frames our animation has. We can get this number by calling spriteframes.getFrameCount and passing our animation base name. Then, in our take damage function, if we exceed the last frame, we destroy the brick. Otherwise, we increment our animation frame to change the brick's appearance. We also need to update our player script. When we collide with something now, we can get the getCollider has method to check if the object has the take damage method. And then we call that to damage brick. All that's left now is adding the brick to our scene. If you activate the grid, it doesn't align with the tile map. Click on the three dots and select Configure Snap. Set the grid step to our tile size, 18 by 18 in this case. But now it aligns at the center of the tiles, so go back and add the offset of half the tile size, 9 by 9. Now the bricks perfectly align and we can just duplicate them and create our scene. Everything is working. This type of game doesn't really need gravity, so let's remove that. We can go into the product settings and zero out our gravity to remove it. And by activating the advanced options, we can also remove the linear drag in the same way. Now we get a proper Brick Breaker style gameplay. We add some particle effects for the brick when they are hit, a very subtle explosion effect. I will quickly scroll over the parameters if you want to copy it yourself. And a smoke effect. Again, here are the parameters for you. I also added an audio effect when the brick gets hit. Select all of them and enable unique names. This will put a percent sign in nodes and give them unique names. It is a good practice to use this, so you won't lose reference when moving the nodes around. Now onto our code. We add a reference for our particles and audio. On take damage, we play the audio. Then, if our particles are already playing, we restart them. Otherwise, we just enable them. When our brick dies, we disable its collision, hide the sprites, and create a very small timer just so our particles finish its simulations, before we delete the brick node itself. Next, we need a way to check if the bricks are destroyed and we've won the game. We are going to use groups for that. Groups are a feature in Godot where you can globally access a list of all the nodes in the group that are currently on the game. It is very useful to quickly access a collection of things of a certain type. So select the brick root node and click the node tab and make sure groups is selected. Create a bricks group by typing bricks and clicking add. Now our node will have a square icon on it, showing it is within the group. And let's create our game manager script in the root node of our scene. Here we can use the get tree, get nodes in group, bricks, dot is empty to see if there are any bricks in our world. And then some finishing touches. Inside our projectile script, we are going to use a twin to slowly fade out our shots and despawn them. We create a twin, add a 1.5 second wait, then we use twin property to twin the modulate alpha value of our sprite to zero in half a second, giving it a fade. We add a set parallel to make the next commands run together. And we do the same twin property, but for the line 2D this time. Then we use the chain method together with the twin callback to despawn our projectile. The chain method we use here is to exit out of the parallel execution, meaning the next command will only be executed when the other twins are done. Now we have all the pieces of our game. We only need a menu and a music. I added a simple menu with a reset and quit buttons. And a few sounds. Now we just need to update our word script. We make sure our menu is hidden inside our ready function, and when it sees that the game is ended, we play the win audio and show the menu. Inside the show menu, we just make it float while slowly appearing by using a twin animation. We also connect the button's press signal to exit the game and restart the game. With the restart, we play the restart audio and wait for it to finish before reloading the scene. And here's the final result. And that's it. A simple Brick Breaker style game with perfect bounces prediction lines. All assets used here are free assets, including the music. All links are in the description. I hope you liked this video, and until next time.